Good afternoon. You know, 2.3 million Americans are locked up right now inside our jails and prisons. 70 million Americans, Americans have a criminal background. If you are a male and you were born in 2001 or after, trending says one out of 17 white males has a likelihood of going to prison. One in six Hispanics have a likelihood of going to prison. And one in three African American males have the likelihood of going to prison. Let me take you on my journey. In 1995, I was given a 20 year prison sentence for distribution of cocaine. The state of South Carolina no longer considered me Jerry Blassingame. They called me inmate number 198153. I was born a statistic, born out of wedlock. The most vivid memory I have of my mother is one night she was arguing with a boyfriend and I was in the next room. And I looked around, pow, pow, two shots rang out. Now let me take you on a journey what happens to a little boy who suffers from PTSD. Five years old, my mother is dead. To take away the pain, I indulged at nine years old in pornography and later into alcohol. I managed to get through high school, ended up getting a two year scholarship to college to study architectural engineering. This was in the height of the crack epidemic. So I soon find myself selling drugs, cocaine. I came home from school one day when I was in college and a friend of mine who was selling drugs for me poured a bag of money out on my bed and he said, this is how much money you made today. It was $10,000. Well, I said, looks like my career as an architect is over. I was a pretty good chemist, and I began to cook up crack cocaine for the local drug dealers here in Greenville. I was making $20,000 a week as a 20-year-old. Well, $20,000 a week, two more years in school as an architect, hmm. It was hard to give up. The first time I was arrested, I got a 15 year sentence and spending the nine months and five years probation. I served four months on that sentence. Six months after I was released, guess what? I got arrested again. So let me tell you what happens when you're caught up in the drug game and you're caught up in poverty. It's like a rat race. My bond was $150,000. My attorney charged me $20,000. So now I'm having to get in the street to raise money to continue up this rat race. Anyway, the second time, I was out on bail and they revoked my bond. And they locked me up until I went to court. The judge sentenced me to 20 years. When I got to the Department of Corrections, I thought I was gonna die. I saw other brown and black men like men. I said, what are you doing here? And why are you here? And they were like, well, this is my third time being in prison. This is my fourth time being in prison. I couldn't find a job when I get out. I couldn't find a house when I got out. And I knew that I was going to be in that situation. I made a decision. Growing up as a kid, I hated God. I didn't think God existed. What kind of God would allow a little boy's mother to be murdered and I never met my dad? But I took a, I took a choice. I began to read the Bible and I, I gave my life to a higher power. And I put faith in place. And I began to read and I began to study and I began to journal. You know, when you're in prison, there is no hope. And I began to ask myself, where is hope? And when I would get up in the morning and, and, and I would study and I would pray. I remember saying hope is the thing that's on the inside of me that says no that says yes when everybody else saying no, it's saying yes. 
Where is hope? Well, the thing that was locked up on the inside of me was allowing me to unlock others. I, I was teaching guys in prison to read and write. And I began to study and I began to pin the vision of what I'm doing now. See, because I knew that one day I was going to be out every day for three and a half years. I made one confession. I will not be here long. I put my faith in something else. March of 1999, I was paroled on a 20 year prison sentence. I served three and a half years on a 20 year prison sentence. My wife married me a year before I got out. One thing I realized that there is something that we have to do to help people that are in prison. And what did I come up with? I made an acronym up for HIA. Housing, employment, education, affirmation, and advocacy. You know that 27% of all men who were arrested, the night they were arrested, they were homeless. 67% said that they had been homeless within the last three years. And we look at all these people out here and we say, they ought to get a job. Well, it's hard to get a job when you have a criminal background. Very hard. Do you know there are 48,000 collateral consequences, things that bar you from housing and jobs and education and licenses once you have a criminal background? Employment. Statistics say that after a person is released from prison, the first year, 60 percent are still unemployed because of their criminal backgrounds. In 2004, I was given a pardon by the South Carolina Department of Corrections. I served five years on 11 years parole and I applied for a pardon and they gave me a pardon. Thank God. But guess what? It was still hard for me to get a job because a pardon is not expungible in the state of South Carolina. Go figure. What does a pardon mean? You're forgiven. <laughs> I forgive you, but oh, yeah, I don't forgive you. <laughs> Affirmation. While I was in prison, I had some professors from Clemson University to write me. They pen paled me. And 20 years later, I still have those loving relationships in my life right now. It is so important because as someone mentioned earlier, I heard in their talk, over 60 percent of people in prison have a mental health issue. Can you imagine being locked up, taken away from your family and taken away from your job or whatever you were doing? Even if you didn't have some type of mental health, mental health issue, that would give you one. But look at me. I had undiagnosed PTSD. Didn't even realize it. But I had hope. Mentoring is a big part of our program. It's a huge part. Every guy in our program gets a mentor for one year. Advocacy. I have a good friend, Glenn Martin, who who started an organization in New York, and this is one of his quotes. Those who are closest to the problem are closest to the resources, but furthest from the power. I want to tell you something. Greenville County gets over a thousand people a year that come back to our community every year from being incarcerated. We spend over five hundred million dollars a year, a half a billion dollars a year to incarcerate our citizens. They are coming out. Ninety percent of the people who are in prison are getting released. And if we don't educate and provide housing, they're going to continue to go back. 
that one in three that I was talking about of black men. And we call young black men predators, but we're not giving these young black men an opportunity. That's crazy. We are people, too. The prison system does not rehabilitate. I've been there. I know. I'm telling you nothing. If I had not have depended on my faith and people and, and people who are writing me and mentoring me, I would still be in prison right now. I had a 20 year sentence. One last thing that I want to talk about. We have got to do a better job to receive people back. I don't know where you work, what you do, but that dreaded checkbox, when a person goes into an a interview room and they sit down and they see the dreaded checkbox, have you ever been convicted of a felony? Most people just quit. I had a guy in my program, he filled out 60 applications before he got a job. So what are we doing? We started a recycling business about eight years ago. This is a plastic bottle. We care more about this bottle than we do a human being. Look around the city of Greenville, you see recycling bins everywhere. But look at the men and women who have criminal backgrounds. So we've created jobs for men. We've created social enterprise. If I had not have created a job for myself 19 years ago, I would be unemployed right now. Not only am I creating jobs for myself, but I've created jobs for over 700 men in the last 20 years. We've helped over 5,000 men, men and women in the last 20 years to transition back into society with no government funding. Four years ago, we created a business a recycling business where we reclaim old houses. We tear down old houses by hand. We reclaim the lumber and we make reclaimed wood furniture. We're reclaiming lives as we reclaim things that would rather be in the landfill. So do me a favor. When you see us on the street, don't call us ex-cons. Don't call us ex-felons. Don't call us criminals. I'm a neighbor. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I am a man. <laughs>